Welcome back friends to our five levels of financial freedom video teaching series. In our previous session, we talked about the importance of long-term water storage and water purification. In today's session, we're going to move into the topic of saving money. Oh, it's such an important topic. In fact, when we look around the United States, we find that most people, when I say most, I mean over 50%, find themselves dependent upon government handouts. It's absolutely amazing when we see what has happened to our economy and to our people uh, over the years, and especially now as we look out and see the economic crisis as it continues to ravage Americans, the unemployment crisis continues to lurk, and we find that most people are, are not actually fully employed. And so we live in a very dangerous economic time, and this provides us ample reason to save money. When we also take a look at the credit card debt that many people find themselves in, oftentimes it's because these people lacked adequate savings. That's why they find themselves in such massive credit card debt. Because as they're driving down the road and they get a flat tire, they don't have any money in the bank. So they have to whip out the Visa or the MasterCard to make ends meet. Now, the idea of having a rainy day fund or having some savings in the bank is a very biblical idea. In fact, we find that in the Bible, even in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6, when the Bible talks about the ant, how he stores up for, uh, in, during the summer for what he'll need in the winter. And so it's a very biblical concept to save money. Now, we have found that the most advantageous way or the most effective way to save money is to automate our savings. That is to have the money taken out of our paychecks before we even get it and have it moved over to your savings account or whatever account you want to have it placed in. And oftentimes if you work at a company uh, they can actually do that for you. You can ask them to take a certain dollar amount or a, a specific percentage out of your paycheck each and every pay period and have it placed into uh, by direct deposit one of your savings accounts. Now I'll, I'll admit that I certainly became discouraged as I began to save money because I realized that I wanted to have enough money in savings to allow me to protect myself in the event of you know an emergency. And that seemed at the time, many years ago, it seemed very difficult. I became very discouraged. How in the world am I going to save you know, enough money uh, whenever I can barely make ends meet each and every month. And that is when I discovered what I call the profit principle. The profit principle is taken directly from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 23 says this, In all labor there is profit. Let me repeat that. In all labor there is profit. So in essence, the profit principle merely says this, an individual's profit from his labor or work is equal to the amount of money that he saves. So, taking that logic to its fullest extent, if we do not save any money on an ongoing basis every single month, then how much profit do we have from our labor? Zero. Because our savings equals our profits, or our profits equals our savings. This verse blew my mind when I read it because I realized that I had been working for zero profit for a very long time. Why? Well, as I would get my paycheck, I would often find that I had already spent it. Or, uh, once I had the paycheck, I was then encouraged by the corporations and the mainstream media and the television and the billboards and the magazines to take my money that I had worked hard for and to give it to the corporations uh, so that they could make me happy. Well, I soon found that that was a farce. I realized that no matter what I bought, no matter what I spent money on, it didn't change my inner peace. And so I quickly discovered that I'll probably be better off taking this money and saving it. So I'll admit, I began with 1%, but ideally we want to save 15%. But I began with 1%, and I would recommend that you don't get too far ahead of yourself and don't make any bold declarations about how you're going to begin saving 20 or 30 or 40% of your income. Let's start with baby steps. If you're not currently saving anything at all, then make it a goal to save 1% from your next pay period. 
and then perhaps you can raise that on the following pay period to 2%. You can ease in to this idea. But when we think about it, it really is sad that so many people spend their entire work week working hard for a paycheck. And then when they get that paycheck, all of it goes to corporations, all of it goes to bills, and in fact, almost, uh, in many cases, more than what they make goes to corporations and to bills because they go into debt uh, just to live. It's a very expensive uh, lifestyle here in America, isn't it? So it's important that we have a plan and we get aggressive. It's also important, I believe, to distinguish or understand the difference between what our wants are and what our needs are. You know, if you walk out into your neighborhood and you look across the street at your neighbor and you see he has a brand new car, you may covet that. You may say, I'd like to have a new car too. But what you don't know is that as you try to keep up with the Joneses, no one's telling you that the Joneses are broke, right? They're broke. They don't have any money. And so they're spending all of their money doing the same thing that you've been taught to do through the culture, and that is to give your money away to corporations as soon as you make it. So we don't want this for you. In fact, that's why we created our five levels of financial freedom, because each step that we're laying out in these sessions are designed to help you achieve real financial security. And that's really what is very important in these very instable and insecure uh, days that we live in. So let's talk about the amount that we want to save. As I mentioned, 15% is the ideal profit rate from your labor. But this is really something that you have to decide. When you work uh, at your job, what is your profit rate? What are you willing to settle for? Are you willing to keep 1% of your money from what you've labored and give the rest to corporations and bills? Are you willing to keep 2% of your money for all of your labor and give the rest to corporations and to bills that you have? Or do you want to set that goal higher? We would recommend 15%, not 10% as most financial advisors have told us throughout history, uh, especially modern history. And we should say on top of this that primarily the reason that we say this is that money has many eroding factors on it. You see, if we take this dollar bill and we lay it on the table, and then we also take this apple and we lay it on the table, if we come back in, say, 10 years to take a look at these two items, what we'll find is a disintegrated apple and we'll find our dollar. But will this dollar still have the same value that it did 10 years ago? No, absolutely positively not. Because money is not math and math is not money, says the famous economist Robert Castellone. Very important point, because money does erode. Inflation erodes our money. Taxation erodes our money. Planned obsolescence. Have you noticed when you buy a refrigerator or a stove or an oven or anything else for that matter, it's almost designed to break down after a certain amount of time. They don't have to design those machines that way, but they do that on purpose so that they can continue getting you to come back and purchase newer models. So we have to factor in all of these eroding factors on money as we decide how much money we want to save. And it seems, based upon our current economic environment, 15% is a very wise move. If we look in China, we find uh, many of those people are saving 40% of their money. Now that makes somewhat sense. Many people would say, how can they do that? Well, it's very important to realize that in Asia, they don't have the robust social security plans and the social safety nets that we do. Therefore, they are almost required to save money if they want to have any money in retirement. But here in America, because of the social safety net programs that we have seen, first of all laid out in the New Deal underneath Roosevelt, and then also underneath uh, LBJ with the Great Society, and of course has been an expansion even since then, we have been dumbed down to the idea of having to save for our own retirement because we believe that the government's going to take care of us. What's an interesting fact that just recently came out was that the wealthy in America are saving an enormous amount of their money. In fact, a higher rate than ever before, 37%. So they're nearing uh, China's rate of 40%. But I would encourage you to simply start where you can. If you can start with 1%, that's perfect. Simply sit down with, if you're married, especially sit down with your spouse and come up with a number that both of you can agree on. And then 
implement it straight away. Just go ahead and go to your HR department if you work at a company or if you're self-employed, just make it happen. Figure out what 1% of your money is, uh, of your paycheck, and have that moved automatically right into your savings account. Maybe you can do 2%, maybe you can do 3%. You need to determine what that is, but I would encourage you to make your ultimate goal 15%. So before we move on to the next step of level one, which is going to be the topic of how much money you should save in total, I want you to determine first how much you're going to begin saving from each pay period. So let's do that before we move on to our next session. And in our next session, we will come back with a very informative way on how you can really begin to save money and also how much money you should save in total. Until then, God bless.